and joy in the Lord. That is each Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our announcements for today. This coming Friday, November the 8th, at 7.30 p.m., the Anointed Voices is one of the guest choirs for the Flip It concert to be held at the meeting place, 490 Master Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. There will be, during this program, a special tribute to the late Bishop Ford. The tickets are $15, and there is a link. Uh, if you have email, you can uh, click on the link from your email uh, to, uh, to purchase tickets. Next Sunday, November the 10th, is Pastoral Sunday here at Ford Memorial. And we will be honoring our bishop and first family. 9.30 a.m. prayer at the altar and 10 a.m. service. We're asking that each ministry leader contact your ministry members and all those members, if your leader has not contacted you before the service on Sunday morning, please come prepared and look for your leader. All of those who are not serving on a ministry, please come prepared to be a blessing to our first family. Amen? Amen. On the third Sunday, November the 17th, we will have 9.30 prayer at the altar, 10 a.m. service. On the fourth Sunday, November the 24th, we will have 9 9.30 a.m. prayer, 10 a.m. morning service, and 4 p.m. we will be having our praise and power service with Apostle Ivy Jenkins and Greater Fountain of Praise. We're asking that you continue to keep our members uh, in prayer. Deacon Lawrence Cottrell and family, Deacon Patty Murray, Mother Lily Elliott, Sister Sylvia Murphy and family, Mother Geneva Johnson, Sister Jennifer Brickhouse and family. For December, Next Generation Fellowship, we will be having gathering in Richmond, Virginia, December the 6th and 7th, for the enthronement of Bishop Bernard Lambert as the prelate of the Next Generation Fellowship Ministries. Uh, the location of the uh, service has not yet been announced. However, if you are going to stay overnight, the information for the hotel is available. If you have email, it came through email, and if you do not receive the emails, please see Deacon Sean Bell for further information. There is a block of rooms that are reserved, but they are only holding those rooms until November the 21st. So if you are interested in having a hotel room at the special group rate, uh, you need to take care of that as soon as possible. Amen? We have a special announcement concerning one of our young people today. Sister Alexis Morris Perkins has been inducted into the National Council of Negro Women. is having a tea party in honor of Alexis and all of the new inductees. This will be on Sunday, November the 10th, and I'm sorry, I, the time is not here, but I'm sure that it's after service. There are tickets. Excuse me? The tea party starts at 11 a.m. Oh. See Deacon Teresa Morris. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, that is certainly an honor. Alexis, are you here? She's not here. Well, let's give God a praise for Alexis. It is a, an honor. I'm sure that this is an organization that does uh, community uh, work throughout the community and um, it is an honor for her to be inducted. So we thank God for that. 
At this time, I'm going to ask if there are any visitors, any first time or returning visitors here with us today, would you please stand? Would you please stand that we may acknowledge you? Amen. welcome you to Fort Memorial Temple. We know that it's not an accident or an incident or by chance that you came to be here at Fort Memorial today. We welcome you in our midst and we truly pray that you will be blessed during the service. We ask you, we welcome you to be free to praise God. Whatever it is that you are looking for, we know that he is able to give it to you. He's able to move doors, open doors, and make ways for you. So as our sign it is our time, but it's for God's glory. Hallelujah. He will do what you need to do, but only He deserves the glory. With the number closest to a memorial number, then and welcome our friends, our, our visitor one today. And as is our custom, where we all stand and greet each other.
Another activity for Christmas. For Memorial Christmas List Raffle. Along with having our Christmas party this year, we will also, we have also decided to take this time to help with the upkeep of the temple with the four Memorial Christmas lists. We, we all know that the church needs items such as trash bags, cleaning supplies, hand soap, etc. So we have compiled an FMT Christmas list of supplies needed for the maintenance of the temple. We are asking that anyone who can and will purchase or make a monetary donation towards the purchase of one or more of the items on the list. In turn, each item on the list will be given a set of number of raffle tickets that you will receive to win the raffle prize at the Christmas party. So, instead of buying your ticket directly for the raffle, you will buy an item of me, turn in your item of me, and in return receive raffle tickets. Correct? The supply list along with the number of items requested for each, as well as the allotted number of raffle tickets for each item, will be placed on the bulletin board for all to see. If you are able to purchase an item, and if you would like to make a monetary, monetary donation for the purchase of an item on the list, please see Sister Mia McIntyre or Sister Shatima Nickerson. Sisters Mia and Shatima will be updating the list as the items are purchased, as well as dispensing the tickets for the raffle that correspond with the items purchased. The more raffle tickets you get, the better your chances to win the prize. You must make a purchase and or donation towards the FMT Christmas list to be entered into the raffle. So please help with our effort to fulfill the four memorial Christmas list for the upkeep of the temple. Your help with this will be greatly appreciated. Amen. Now at this time, I'm going to ask that you stand and give God a praise. Stand and give Him a praise. Hallelujah. He brought us all today. Hallelujah. To hear His word. So give Him glory on this morning. And while you're standing, hallelujah, at this time, please receive, hallelujah, our pastor and mission. Bishop Lee Malone for the field. Well, can you give the Lord another hand? I, I, I almost 
almost couldn't sleep last night because I am so glad to know that we serve a forgiving God. Oh, y'all, if y'all go ahead, they can't touch y'all yet. I said, I'm so glad that I am not in, I am not in a religion that condemns me to hell without giving me a way of escape. I wish I had some folk in there. is waiting. God. I say he's waiting to love us and to forgive us. And I, I, I am celebrating the power of restoration this morning. Wait a minute, y'all, let me, let me. I want to preach today, but I feel like something's getting ready to happen. All right. Elder Tiffany, will you come, come please? I, I believe, um, I am of the persuasion to believe that life happens to some of us. Amen. And we, we make some decisions and we do some things that we get caught up in the heat of the moment. And, and the, but this is the thing that I don't understand. That when we get caught up in the heat of the moment and we say, Lord, forgive me. The scripture says that he is faithful and just. In other words, that's something you can count on. That's a rock that you can count on. That's unwavering. It, 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 he does that. He forgives us. He forgives us of all of our sin. This, this, this woman of God went for something. This woman of God went through something. And I saw her faithfulness in an uncomfortable place. Faithful coming to service. Still finding her hands to do whatever she could do. Didn't get an attitude like some of y'all do. Didn't take the attitude, can't nobody tell me nothing. I'm grown and I understand it all. But she humbled herself and submitted herself to the leadership of this church. And with the full support of Overseer Lawrence and Overseer Harvard. I want to take this opportunity as you will publicly silence. I want to publicly release you.
whatever you do, just hold on to the Lord. Don't let go of him. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. And, 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 and grab him by the hand again and tell him, you hold on to the Lord because I'm going to hold on to you. But I just, I just, I'm just glad to know, I'm, I'm glad to know that I'm in a church around people that will hold on to me and not get rid of me. And don't be saying that to me. And then the truth of the matter is we gon' we gon' make some mistakes. Nobody gonna say that we gon' do some stuff. But I'm glad to know that even though I may have done it, hell is not my portion. <laughs> and I try to get y'all to understand this all the time. That's the reason why the devil's so angry with some of y'all. Because y'all done slipped through some stuff that he had designed to kill you. Y'all have slipped through some stuff and made it through some stuff that the devil had designed to destroy you and to take your mind so that you would not be a recipient of his blood. But you ought to thank God today that he gave you another chance. Not one more chance, but another chance. And he keeps on giving you a chance and keeps on and keeps on forgiving you and keeps on making a way and keeps on overturning it. Why don't you grab somebody by the hand and say, I'm just glad.
That's all we have. All we have is one another. And we have, with all of our differences, all with all of our differences, we have to love one another. And we have to restore one another. Oh, y'all ain't saying that to me. Now, I may not like what you do. Can I? Oh, I need to fight.
Every hell of blessing shall be released and shall overtake me. Every hindrance to block my progress shall be moved. I shall walk in holiness and in righteousness. My flesh shall comply with the will of God for my life. No demon in hell shall be able to prevent the move of God in my life. The famine and drought are over. It is raining all around me. The latter rain is now falling upon me, my family, my true friends, and my ministry. I am favored of the Lord. I am a tither and a liberal giver, brought out of darkness and into the marvelous light. Therefore, I bind weakness and I release strength. I bind poverty and I release wealth. I bind sickness and I release healing. I bind frustration and I release peace. I bind sorrow and I release joy. I bind stagnation and I release growth. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Benefits, sales and commission. Favorable settlements, estates and inheritance. Interest and income, rebates and returns. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money, debts paid off. Expenses decrease, blessings and increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, this I declare and decree by the word of the Lord. And it shall be established unto me according to Job 22, 28. Signed, sealed, and delivered in the name of Jesus. Everybody, let's say amen. Those of you that are coming, will you bring your tithe at this time?
opportunity that we have to share your gospel. Now, Lord, we pray that over these next few minutes that you will anoint us afresh, give us understanding and clarity of the speech that we might share a word that will encourage and strengthen this house. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your visitation thus far. God, if there be any sick amongst us, we pray now that you heal them through your word. We give you glory and honor for what you're doing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many will you so how many celebrate? Amen. Many quarter field this morning. Gathered themselves unto him, 
and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. As you're taking your seat, I want to just leave a thought with you. Uh, warfare according to the opposition. Warfare according to the opposition. And just look at somebody and tell them we can win with who we have. We can win with who we have. David has found himself in a precarious situation. Whether he has found himself in the place after he has praised his way out of death. Because it is a fact that true praisers are people who are always coming out of something. People who are praisers are people who are uh, praising him on the run because every time you see them, you need to understand that they are surviving something else. That's the reason why you got to understand uh, the importance of people's praise and understanding what God is doing in the lives of God's people because the reality of it is most of us here are here only because our praise brought us where we are. We have escaped depression because of our praise. We have, to, we have escaped to the destruction of our souls because when we did not have anything else, we had the ability to praise. Touch your neighbor and say, don't lose your ability to praise God. And, and that is what the enemy will try to do. The enemy will try to silence you. The enemy will try to get you to the place where you feel as if you don't have a right or have a reason to praise God. Praise is warfare. I want you to understand this. Praise is warfare. Uh, worship is the relationship that I have with God because of who he is. But, work, but praise becomes my warfare. Praise is the weapon that I have. Y'all they helping me. Uh, praise is what I use against the enemy to make him feel and know I'm coming after him. When you, when, when the enemy has you in a place where you feel as if or he feels that he has you, you have to change up and you have to make sure that you start moving and you start waving and that you start clapping and that you start hollering because that sends a message to the devil that says, I thought she was dead. I thought he was going to quit. I thought they were going to give up, but it sounds like there's life in them. It sounds like there's something in them, and I've got to back up and leave them alone. Touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do, don't lose your ability to praise God. Praise is what keeps you alive. Buzzards are birds of prey, but they don't fight. Buzzards are birds that fly around and wait on you to die. God help me here. Buzzards come around only because you are in a still posture. Buzzards start circling around and they start sending a message to the other buzzards and other. And see what happens is when the buzzard begins to fly around, he sends a message to everything else on the ground. He sends a message because they see the buzzard and they say, well, if the buzzard is up there, there must be something that is about to die down there. You know what I'm saying? And they know that it ain't dead yet, but because it's not moving, we might as well get our forks and our knife. We ought to get our napkin because we're getting ready to eat. And then they all begin to converge. And then all of a sudden, the buzzards begin to fly away. Why? Because something on the inside of you causes you to remember who God is. And a hand goes up and says, God, I thank you. 
gonna kill him. We got him, y'all. They said, Oh, we know everything about him. We know what he's done. We we got him where we want him. We're gonna destroy him. And all that, and when they and when they came in to kill David, when they came in to get David, David said, I got to get out of here, y'all. They said, and I, I I got to figure a way to get out of this. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this. And, and David remembered, he said, Well, wait a minute, I said the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And right there, when they were coming to get him, David began to write or scratch on the wall. And he began to act crazy. And he began to spit on his beard. And, and when they brought him to the king, the king said, why did y'all bring a crazy man to me? Let that man go. I don't have time to deal with nothing like that. I just come to tell you that why If you will, to escape. So somebody, I escaped by the skin of my teeth. Y'all, <sighs> y'all still trying to be self-righteous and holding it down. Some of y'all, I want you to understand, baby, you're not where you are because of your degree. You, 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 you don't have what you have because you are so financially smart and, and you know how to do this and invest and you know where to put your money. No, you are where you are because when you didn't have nothing, you had a praise. God help me here. When you, when you, before the degrees, before you got the job that you have, y'all ain't saying nothing. Before you are known as you are the elder, the bishop, the apostle, the potentate, before all you had a praise, and it was your praise that God recognized, and it was your praise that God says, I'm going to bless them just because of their praise. Oh God, when you touch somebody and tell them, tell God is going to bless you because of your praise. Your, your praise will cause God to open up doors for you. Your, your praise will cause God to put you in environments that you should not be in. But when you get there, don't forget who God is. Oh God, touch your body. Say, don't get bougie when you get there. Don't, don't get wonderful when you get there. But remember, it is your praise that brought you to where you are. David, David now is in this place. And, and, and David has fled to uh, this place now called Adullam. Adullam is a city of caves. As a matter of fact, his family did not know where he was. But when they heard where they had taken him, the scripture allows us to understand that they now come and they are joined again under David. I want to prophesy to every person that will receive it. And I want you to understand that even though your family may be separated and scattered right now, God will put us in a cave called a duel. Scripture allows us to understand that in order for David to win the battle, because you understand, as I heard it close, you do understand how that David was still on the run from King Saul. Saul is still angry at the fact that God has chosen David to be the king. You got some folk that's angry with you. Oh, not because you've done anything to them. Not because you talked about them. Not because you stole their Halloween candy. But you got some folk that's got an attitude with you. Just because of the fact that you are a 
anointed. When you touch somebody and tell them, don't hate me because I'm anointed. Don't have a problem with me because I have an anointing. You don't know what I had to deal with to get this anointing. And you don't know the hell I got to live through to maintain this anointing. My anointing did not come cheap. Discord 
are among the ranks of David's men. So all of the strong men, huh? all of the men of valor, you know, there are some folk that uh, when they come into your presence, you just you just straighten up. Y'all ain't saying that. You know, you 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 act bad and you act like you can do a lot of stuff, but 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 when Dwayne walks up on you, you think about it twice. Yeah. You see, Saul took all of those men. He, he got rid of all of those men and put and David had to flee and he could not get anybody to go along with him. But when David got into a duke. David says, I've got to win this battle because I can't stay in this cave. Let me, let me, let me say this to you. A doulum is not a permanent dwelling. A doulum is just a place where you regroup. It might be five months, it might be five years, it might be ten years, but you don't ever plan on staying in a doulum. A doulum is just a place where you get your thoughts together and you regroup and get everything that you need so you can get out and conquer what it is that's been trying to hold you back. David, 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 while he is there in a doulum, he says, I've got to have an army, but I don't have nobody that I can deal with. Or in other words, these men are the men that were crazy. They were stressed out. They didn't have everything together. These men now, people that are in distress are people, are, these are people who are unstable at best. Because you cannot focus on a goal or you cannot focus on a target as long as you are worried about everything that's going on in your life. It's hard to focus. It's hard. Y'all y'all may not I know y'all may not want to admit this, but it's hard to go to work when you are going through a divorce. It's, it's hard. It's hard to. It's it's hard to go to work when you got children that don't want to act right and they are causing you pain and and you are in distress. You can't focus on nothing. You can't be consistent with anything because you you your mind is pulled in four and five different. Ways. But, 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 but these are the men that God gives to David. Then, 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 then he gives them men who are in debt. What does that, what does that have to do with anything? He says, I'm going to give you men, y'all, y'all got to catch this. He says, I'm going to, David, I'm going to give you men that you ain't going to have no other choice but to trust. In this day, they had what was called debtor's prison. So, so if a man was in debtor's prison, he was always trying to get out so he can go back home. God gives David men that always have the ability to turn on him. He says, he says, he says, I, I'm not going to give you men that are that are financially able and they got everything together. He says, I'm going to give you men that are in distress. They are in debt up to their neck, and the only thing they're trying to do is figure out a way to get out so they can go back to their children. They can restore their families. He says, but I'm going to give you these kind of men because there's something that's going to happen when you begin to minister to them and not reject them, but show them how it is supposed to be. The last thing that he deals with is men that are 
discontent. There's no harder thing to encourage than to try to encourage someone who is just unhappy. Discontent. No matter what you do, they can't find peace in anything. I don't care how you cook their eggs. They ain't gonna lie. I don't care how you wash their car. They ain't gonna lie. I don't care what opportunity or what plan you put in front of them because they are discontented, they are angry. Oh God, I don't have time to stop here. There are some discontented folk here in this church. You're angry at life and you're angry at what has happened to you and you don't know who to have your anger to. So when you come to the house of God, you just mad and that's why I can't look at your face and I cannot respond to who you are and how you're acting because I know that the Lord gave you to me because there's something about you that God wants to pull out of you to make you great. Y'all ain't gonna help me. to somebody and tell them I might be going through something but God is going to use me, me, me with all of my junk, with, with all of my mess, with all of my failures, with, with all of God has chosen to use me. Everybody has thrown me aside. Everybody has rejected me, but there is something about me that God loves, and there's something about me that he trusts enough to know that I am able to win the battle. All right. We're going to get out here on time. It's, it's in this that I consider one of the greatest movies of my time. And anybody who knows me knows that I love The Wizard of Oz. Father Bell, I love it. I love The Wizard of Oz. I can watch it anytime. Uh, but, but a few years ago, they made a remake of it, and they called it Oz the Great. Long story short, Oz, Oz finds himself uh, a, a, a schemer, a scammer. He was a trickster, and uh, he's always looking for some kind of way to be great. He, he doesn't want to be mediocre. He, he's tired of, of scamming and flim flamming and, and he gets caught up in this whirlwind, in this tornado with Patterson. And in, in the tornado, as his life should be coming to an end, he hollers out and says, No, I want to be great. Make me great. All of a sudden, the wind stops. The tornado stops. And he lands and finds himself in arms. Meets the witch, meets the witch you know the story. Now, man, all of this stuff starts happening. And Evanora uh, 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 makes an attack against him and says, I'm gonna, I know who he is. I know he is not who he is saying he is. I know he's a fraud. He is not the wizard. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing here. Uh -huh. he, he, he finds and he meets Glenda. Now, this is the amazing thing about Glenda. And, and some of y'all, y'all, you might dance now, you might dance later. But the thing about Glenda is, Glenda already knows who he is. Glenda, you, you know, you know, you know the older saints, and, 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 and y'all ain't saying, I know, I know we don't like this, but the older saints could look at me and tell you was a liar. And they be, and you just be sitting there talking, and, and I did 
did this and I got that and I'm doing this and that. And, and the older saints are just looking at me and saying, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. And no sooner they turn around, they say, that child is just a liar. That's, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what Glenda, Glenda recognizes. She, she confides in Oscar and, and, and she reveals, watch this, that she knows that he is not the wizard. But, but she also, watch this, she also speaks confidence into him. God help me. God help me. She says, I know you're not the wizard. I, I know that you can't do what you say you can do. But watch this. They don't know. Oh, God. See, see, sometimes you got to understand that God will put people in your path just for you to have strength. Because you're putting confidence in the individual, but God is just trying to get you to trust in him. So he will put an individual in front of you to cause you to look to them. But the reality of it is you have to look to God. Because if you look to the individual, the individual will fail you every time. I wish I had help here. He says, don't, don't lean to the arm of flesh because the arm of flesh will fail. to 
to sow seed. They have the wisdom to build. And the rest of them are people who are always happy, singing, and ready to dance. I would like to tell you, I would like to continue with you today to tell you that God will give you the most unlikely people to win the war. Sometimes you're looking and expecting for particular people to help you in life's journey. But what you need to understand is that God will give you who you need. And every now and then you're going to need some folk in your life that will sow a seed in you. And that does not necessarily have to be money, but they can sow a seed of wisdom in your life. You can need some folk that can help you to plant so that you can have a
somebody and look them in the eye. And tell them, but you still here. I say you're still here. I say you're still here. And he said, Well, there are two or three that are gathered in my name. I'll be in the midst of you. And anybody that come up against you, I'll destroy them for my sake. I wish I had about 10 people that are just praise God because you're still here. And the devil cannot remove you. And the devil can't get rid of you. Come on, move your feet. And come on, praise him.
want to say. First thing I want to say to you, I know I'm, I'm not a I'm not a good time prophet. I don't do all that. But while while I was in the while I was in the chair and the young people were in the aisle, I heard in my spirit. I heard in my spirit. And I just got to tell you what I heard in my spirit. I'm always careful. But while I saw the children in this aisle, uh, you know, because we still material. Some of y'all parents, y'all get distressed and y'all get disturbed this time of the year. You get frustrated. But while they were in the aisle, I heard, I heard in my spirit that this is going to be a good Christmas. Some of your, some of your children have improved, they have done better in school, even in their attitude, they have done better, and your desire is to be able to do certain things, and I want you all to understand the power of your seed. Every time you get in this line and you sow, and don't nobody have to, don't nobody have to pump and prime you or lie to you and twist your arm, but you get in this line every week and you sow. I heard the Spirit say, I'm going to visit you in this last quarter of the year. You, you get ready to finish strong in this last quarter of the year. There's some stuff that you should have had that you didn't have, but God says, I'm going to give you victory in this last quarter of the year. Why don't you praise the Lord right there?
that those of y'all that know this to be true, every young person 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that was dancing like that, they are, the, all of them are doing well. They doing it.
Saturday at 10 a.m. and meeting here in a to do what we need to do. You've got that.
anointed to rebuke depression. You are anointed to rebuke the spirit of depression. You do not allow that nasty, foul demon residence in your heart, in your mind, or in your house. You have that authority. Tell somebody and say, you have that authority. I give unto you the power to change the channel.